All right, um, we are going to go ahead and get started. So welcome everybody. Uh, today's presentation, uh, in today's presentation, we are going to be explaining warehouse insurance, uh, what it is and how to get a competitive quote. My name is Meredith Lambert and I will be your host today. Um, we have an expert on the line to actually handle the presentation, which is really exciting. Um, I am the marketing manager here at Trade Risk Guarantee, which translates to being responsible for researching and creating the educational content for all of you. Joining me today is Felicia Donahue, TRG's Marine Insurance Manager. Felicia is an expert in the area of marine cargo insurance, and she works tirelessly on behalf of our clients, helping them through the claims process and ensuring that they are adequately covered. This webinar is being presented by Trade Risk Guarantee, or as many of you know us as, TRG. We are located in the heart of downtown Bozeman, Montana, and have been providing U.S. Customs Bonds and cargo insurance solutions directly to importers since 1991. This direct-to-importer business model is unique in the international trade community since it cuts out the need for an additional middleman and allows TRG to become another member of your international trade team. We will be recording this webinar and it will be available on YouTube for future reference. If you want to be notified the moment it releases, I highly recommend that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We also post additional educational videos on our YouTube account um, about once a month. So if you are not already, uh, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. I believe we're gonna be putting a link in the chat box of the presentation. Um, if not, we will also be uh, sending that out in our follow-up email. Uh, you can also search for us um, on YouTube by searching trade risk guarantee hyphen TRG uh, directly in that search feature. Uh, now, as a quick reminder, this presentation is for educational purposes only and does not constitute legal advice. Throughout the presentation, uh, please submit your questions in the question box in the webinar interface. I will be trying, well, uh, Felicia actually will be trying to answer those questions as best she can um, and as many as she can. Uh, but for the more in-depth questions or questions that need, you know, a more specific answer, um, please go ahead and still submit those in the question box and either Felicia, myself, or another member of our team can reach out after the webinar, you know, to try to provide an answer for that. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and pass it over to Felicia now uh, for the webinar to begin. If uh, Felicia, you wanna go ahead and take over. Thank you, Meredith. Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, so let's get started. In today's webinar, we will be covering the following three topics. What is Burris House Insurance? how to assess your risk for warehouse policies, and how to get a competitive quote. So first up, we are going to give a little introduction on warehouse insurance and hopefully provide some insight on why we are talking about it. Simply put, warehouse insurance protects your cargo during long-term storage it is very likely there will be a point either at the beginning or the end of your cargo's journey that your goods need to be stored. Uh, we're not necessarily talking about the normal course of transit, however. So while standard cargo insurance protects your goods while they are in transit, warehouse insurance protects them while they are being stored. Uh, a cargo insurance policy can be extended to include additional warehouse coverage, which would typically include coverage in the event of catastrophic events like flood, windstorms, or earthquakes. Policies are customized based on the type of good, the mode of transit, and the preferred protection that is your company's priority. For a little bit of background, let's take a look at the history of warehouse policies and how they were secured in the past. Uh, importers used to secure an insurance policy on various types of policies um, as part of their general life, for example, like their general liability policy. Uh, however, in more recent years, it became more cost effective to secure warehouse insurance as part of their cargo insurance policy. 
Um, however, with the hardening of the market, this has begun to, begun to change. Uh, we have covered the hard insurance market in a separate webinar last year. And for the reason of the hard market um, and how it is affecting the industry and its increase in rates, we will send out the link to that presentation in the follow-up to this webinar, and you can always find out all of our webinars on our YouTube channel. So the hardening cargo of the cargo insurance market has made it more difficult to secure warehouse coverage as part of your cargo insurance policy due to the fact that many insurance providers don't want to take on the additional risk of a warehouse. Um, we will cover this more, more fully later in the presentation, but generally goods are more at risk when they are sitting in one place for an extended period. Um, therefore, warehouse coverage is considered a riskier type of coverage for uh, your insurance underwriter. Many providers are choosing not to offer warehouse policies at all in favor of writing business that they see as less risky. If you are able to secure warehouse coverage as an extension to your cargo policy, this coverage can be added as an endorsement onto your cargo policy. Endorsements are also known as riders, and they are an amendment to an existing insurance contract that changes the terms of the original policy and can add coverage that would otherwise be excluded. TRG will complete an application for your warehouse coverage needs and can be added at the beginning of the policy, um, Often your policy has many endorsements when your policy is first written to fill in any gaps of coverage um, or even possibly mid policy. It's typical for customers to need updates to their storage limits or even the location being insured throughout the year. Each change will require a new endorsement to be processed, which is always provided to you for your records. There are two ways to secure warehouse space for your goods when they are in transit. Um, either you can store the goods in a warehouse you yourself own, or you can rent space within a warehouse owned by a third party. This is very similar to the process of shipping your goods through a third party logistics provider. You may not own the ship, but you are renting space aboard the ship to transport your goods. Uh, this distinction between who owns the warehouse is important since it can greatly affect the claim process should a warehouse claim occur. We call this section warehouse versus warehouseman because there is confusion on how much liability the owner of warehouse has in the event of a claim. Now, if the importer has warehouse coverage like we have been talking about, this is an insurance policy that the shipper themselves secured in order to protect their goods. So, for example, in the event that goods are lost or damaged during an act of God, the shipper would typically be reimbursed for the insured value of the damages under their warehouse policy. The warehouseman limit of liability is the maximum amount of money the warehouse owner is liable for in the event of a loss. This is very similar to the carrier's limit of liability when we are talking about shipping goods internationally. Standard warehouseman limited liability coverage limits the liability to a small percentage of the lost or damaged cargo's value. In the event of a claim, the warehouseman must first be found to be at fault in order for their limit of liability to even come into play. The warehouse provider may only be liable to pay the shipper cents per pound if they are responsible for the loss, and they are only responsible when the warehouse operator is negligent. So in the same example as earlier, if goods are damaged in an active God event, the warehouse owner is likely not liable for the loss. Therefore, the shipper would receive no reimbursement from the warehouse. This is why it is important not to rely on the owner of a warehouse to provide any coverage for the loss of goods being stored in their facility. You want to have that control. Okay, so now that we've covered what warehouse insurance is and why it is important to secure your own policy, let's take a look at how to assess risk for warehouse policies. Since TRG has been able to provide many warehouse policies in the market, we have insight on what underwriters look at when assessing the risk of your warehouse location. So this section is going to cover what aspects underwriters look at in order to give you an idea of what you should look at when selecting a warehouse. So first off, and this may seem a little obvious, but take a look at fire protection. 
Warehouse fires are becoming more of a concern due to recent wildfire losses, as well as large losses due to rapidly spreading fires within warehouses. So assess what types of fire protection the warehouse has. Are there sprinklers installed? Are there monitored alarm in the facility that alert firefighters? These type of precautions lower the risk of a total loss since they would help stop the spread of a fire within the facility. On the topic of monitoring, does the facility have 24 seven security monitoring? Having the facility monitored at all times reduces the risk of theft, burglary, vandal or vandalism to the goods while they're being stored. Monitoring also helps reduce the magnitude of a loss as appropriate authorities are contacted quickly. Uh, next question to take a look at when you're deciding is, is your storage facility located in a CAT area? CAT stands for catastrophic risk, and this includes areas that are prone to earthquakes, wildfires, uh, named windstorms like hurricanes, and floods. Warehouses in a CAT area are considered riskier by insurers, um, and while it is difficult to avoid these areas altogether, it is possible to limit the amount of time your goods spend in that location and how much your risk is concentrated in that area of higher risk. The next big thing that insurers look at is what items are being stored. If the items being stored in the warehouse are easily damaged, there is more risk of a loss. Are the items considered unstable or high theft targets or perishable? Your insurance provider will want to know what you will be storing and for how long in order to get a better gauge on the risk involved, as well as what controls you have in place with the warehouse to prevent the loss that the cargo is more prone to. For example, if you store fresh produce in a warehouse, warehouse insurers will want to know about the refrigeration system used in the warehouse as well as maintenance programs and backups of power apply in the event of a power loss. Typically, insurers like to see backup power that can sustain a warehouse for a full three days. Have you talked with your warehouse provider about what their backup plan is? All right, so now let's get some tips that you can use in order to get a more competitive quote on a warehouse policy now that you've selected your warehouse. First tip is to shop your policies. This is a good rule of thumb anytime you are pricing out coverage for your business. Um, however, you have to make sure that you are providing the same information to every potential, potential provider while quoting. Something that might not seem like a big difference to you could be a big difference to underwriters. And making sure everyone has the same information will make it easier to compare the quotes apples to apples and really see the benefits of one over the other. This could be looking at multiple types of insurance too, such as adding to your cargo insurance policy versus adding to your commercial liability policy. Next thing to take a look at is shop your warehouse. This is directly tied to the information that we covered in the last section of the webinar. In order to get a competitive quote, you have to start at the foundation of that quote, and for warehouse insurance, that is the warehouse itself. For the safest option that takes the proper steps to ensure the safety of your goods, um, this will help you answer any questions the underwriters of the policy may have, and it will give you that feeling of security that your goods are going to be taken care of. Remember that the warehouse is another vendor that your company is working with. It is acceptable that you ask questions about their facility before you agree to work with them, and it's okay to re require that they have certain standards of care for your cargo. And on that topic, we have number three, have written agreements with the warehouse. Make sure that any agreements you have made with the warehouse have been agreed upon in writing. You may feel like the owner, warehouse owner is a man of his word, but if a loss arises, nothing can be acted upon with a spoken agreement. U.S. regulations require the warehouse to issue a warehouse receipt, but these additional agreements may vary depending on the condition of the warehouse location and the type of goods being stored. For example, it is common to require a warehouse to never store your goods directly on the ground. If it's in a flood prone area, require that your goods are always stored at least four inches off the ground to prevent damage, such as a burst pipe or a weather event.
And next point is diversify your risk. When it comes to warehouse insurance, diversifying translates to spreading out the locations where your good is stored, especially if you have a lot of volume. If all of your goods are stored in one location, let's say a city prone to floods, and that city suffers a massive flooding event, you could suffer a major loss too. Your major loss translates to a major claim on your warehouse policy. Therefore, underwriters prefer to see a variety of warehouse locations to minimize the chance of a major loss in one spot. And next point is keep your stock moving. It may seem a little counterintuitive, but it, when it comes to shipping goods, uh, the longer it sits in one place, the more likely an accident becomes. If your goods are left sitting in a warehouse for an extended period, there is a higher risk of theft, accident caused by the movement of other goods around it, or it just being misplaced or being caught in an inclement weather event. If there is not a good reason to keep your goods in one particular area, keep them moving on to the next location to your next customer. And finally, number six, protect yourself outside of insurance. This really boils down to being proactive and making the effort to avoid a claim because your companies will always retain a share of the cost of a claim. A good example of this is in the event of a named windstorm, such as a hurricane. Typically, there is warning prior to the arrival of a storm, and typically the path of the storm is, pre is predicted. Therefore, you should make every effort you can to get your goods out of harm's way by either moving them away from the path of the hurricane or making arrangements to raise your goods off the floor to avoid flooding damage. Uh, for example, let's say you have $50,000 worth of cargo in a warehouse in the direct path of a hurricane that is expected to cause severe flooding. For most warehouse policies, it's typical to have a higher deductible for catastrophic losses like flooding usually around 15,000 to 25,000, depending on the specific warehouse. Let's say you can move all of your cargo to another warehouse further inland and then back for around $10,000 round trip. That might cost your company $10,000 out of pocket, but it's still cheaper than if your cargo was totally lost in flooding and you have to pay 15,000 to $25,000 deductible on the cargo. Now, bear in mind, this is an example, and you realize we realize you may not always be able to move your cargo um, whenever a weather event comes up. In fact, it may not be the best choice in specific situations. But the point is to act as though you aren't insured at all and take all precautions possible. At the end of the day, insurance is there to absorb a loss that would be devastating to your company's bottom line. And TRG's goal during a claim is to assist you and the insurance company with resolving a loss fairly and as quickly as possible. While the insurers we work with are excellent at what we do, it does still take time to finalize a claim. A claim often means man hours dedicated to handling the claim, potentially lost sales, and lost time as the cargo is either replaced or repaired. Yes, the cargo is insured, and yes, it will probably be paid out, but the best way to protect your business is to take all steps you can to avoid a claim altogether. Okay, so we are now going to open up the discussion for questions. Um, again, I am only going to answer the questions that I feel are appropriate for me to answer. If your question is more specific, please still submit it and I will pass it along and we will try to get you an answer directly after the webinar. And now I'm going to pass this over to what, Meredith while you submit those questions. All right, thank you, Felicia. Um, while we wait, uh, like Felicia said, for those questions to be submitted, I'd like to take a moment to talk a little bit about TRG. At TRG, we sell directly to consumers. So rather than purchasing through a third party, we're going to help you out by letting you buy direct. And that gives you an option for lower pricing and very competitive customer service and claims assistance. In addition to providing US customs bonds, we also write all risk annual cargo insurance policies. We are also proud to announce that we are able to offer more flexible pricing options than ever in an effort to help importers protect their cargo while protecting their immediate cash flow. All of our policies are written through the Lloyds of London, Cat XL Catlin, or Hudson Markets. Now, Lloyds of London is the largest insurance market in the world, 
they basically created cargo insurance. Um, XL Catlin and Hudson are domestic providers that enable us to underwrite policies at a low price. Now we offer local representation. If you have a loss, you are going to be speaking directly with Felicia and her team, but that doesn't mean that we can't handle a loss anywhere. We have representatives around the world ready to help in the case, um, in the case of a loss uh, to make sure that you get paid the right amount quickly. Finally, our policies are custom. We offer three international, domestic, and warehouse coverage, um, and they are wrapped around your business. These are not blanket policies. These are not off-the-shelf policies. Uh, these are policies written directly for you based on your business, making sure you have the coverage you need. Our annual all-risk policies start at some of the lowest annual costs in the market. All right, so let's uh, get over to those questions. Um, I'm gonna pass it back over to Felicia. Um, I'm sure she you know, has a couple to go through. Yeah, we have some great questions in here. So I'm just going to dive right in. Um, the first question that we have is, we have inventory in two public warehouses and they are insured separately. Is it possible to get blanket coverage for both warehouses? This is a great question because it's really typical for policies to have multiple locations. Um, you only need one endorsement that is going to cover all of your warehouse exposure at once. It will usually list the limit for each location separately so that you don't have, um, if you have one big loss in one location, you know, it doesn't mean the second location will never be able to file a claim. Um, the best thing you can do is talk to your insurance provider and tell them exactly what your priorities are and what your exposures are in those two warehouses. Um, so another question, we've seen a couple of questions about warehousing in countries outside of the US. Um, insurers in the US definitely can write warehouse coverage in other countries. However, there are some restrictions um, in local regulations for whether an insurance provider can cover a warehouse stock in that country. Um, always bring it up with your provider and you know they can tell you pretty quickly whether they have the authority to write in that country or not. Um, and you know, specific countries, I, I suggest checking with your provider on whether or not they can quote it. Another have, question that we have um, is, you know, does cargo, insur cargo insurance with warehouse also cover the building itself? Um, and you know, tying that with liability insurance. Unfortunately, marine cargo insurance, it, it's only going to cover the cargo itself while it's in storage. Um, as soon as you know you begin shipping it, that the coverage is going to cease. Um, it, and it's a pure property policy, so it's not going to be covering any liability um, for for um, the warehouse operations. Another question that we have um, is, you know, is warehouse insurance um, also covered by general product insurance? And the question is, it absolutely can be. Um, a lot of different lines of insurance will cover your your warehouse um, and and its stock, but it's never safe to assume that something automatically covers you exactly the way you need it to be covered. Um, always talk with your provider and talk to them about your priorities and what your coverage needs are. Uh, and the other bit of advice I would give just on that question is, you know, there are since there are multiple types of policies that can cover your warehouse, make sure you're not double insuring. Uh, make sure you're keeping everyone on the same page and that you're keeping your warehouse coverage with the provider that can give you the best coverage. Uh, it might seem like having two policies covering your warehouse would be a good idea, but it actually can put you in a bit of a no man's land during a claim because each insurer uh, likely has a clause in their policy that says if someone else will cover this, they have to pay first. So um, it can be a little tricky, it can slow down your claim. So it's best to get a, a warehouse coverage that is tailored to exactly what you need with one provider that understands your priorities and your needs. Uh, and then another question that I'm seeing is, you know, isn't warehouse losses part of a freight forwarder's liability? And you know this ties straight back to the warehouseman's limit of liability that we talked about. Um, 
limits of liability it may apply it will really depend on the specifics of what happened and you know the limits that your service provider has put in place it's safest and the best way to protect your interest in the cargo is to get your own policy that you have control of that way you know exactly what you're covered for and you know your business best so making sure that you have the control and you don't have that weak link of relying on someone else's coverage or someone else's liability is the best way to ensure that you are fully covered if something happens to your cargo while it's being stored. Uh, another question that we have um, is, do your policies cover the peril of vermin? Excellent question. Um, it is typical for vermin or pest damage while in storage to be excluded. Um, if you need something like that specifically covered, it, it's a really specific question to looking at your risk. So you would need to talk with your provider on, on whether that is an option to have that exclusion removed. And then I'm seeing a few more just really specific country specific questions. So we will try to get back to you, everyone, with those um, bef before it, you know, promptly. Um, another question I'm seeing here is what is a good deductible amount to balance cost and risk with warehouse? Another great question. Um, deductible is one of the best tools you have out there to control what you pay. Um, a lower deductible means that you're going to have higher premium because, you know, insurers are taking on more of the risk. With a warehouse specifically, typically you, you want, a, you're going to be offered a slightly higher deductible than on your transit um, because insurers consider it more risky. Typically, I see a deductible, just a standard deductible warehouse at around 2,500. I've seen it as high as 100,000, um, depending on the size of the warehouse. So there's a really big range there. So um, the specifics of how to balance your cost um, and retention is something that you'll have to talk specifically with your provider. Um, bear in mind, if your warehouse is in a cat exposed area, you will almost definitely have a higher deductible for cat specific losses so earthquake flood um, windstorm that sort of thing uh, it will only apply if a loss is caused by those specific instances and like i said it usually ranges anywhere from 15 to 25,000 as a starting place uh, some of that just depends on how much you have in the warehouse and the risk of your cargo Another quick question I'm seeing is our inventory fluctuates depending on the season. We have um, high and low, hence do you have premiums that are seasonal. Um, seasonal volume is really typical, especially around that fourth quarter uh, for a lot of, of importers. Um, definitely talk specifically with your provider about what your highs and lows are. Um, with warehouse, you know, that is definitely factored in. Um, if you can say, you know, these specific months, I'm going to be really high and these specific months, I'm going to be really low, your underwriter can work with that and write that into the policy to make it fit with you. Um, for that kind of underwriting, it probably means you're going to have to be a little more in communication with your insurers to make sure that, you know, limits are what they need to be when they need to be. Um, but that is definitely an option that insurers can take a look at with you. Um, another question I'm seeing is, you know, kind of just a general question about our policies with Lloyd's, but I think it's a great question because a lot of our warehouse policies are written, written with Lloyd's. Um, 
this is asking how many entities are there between Lloyd's and my company? It seems like there are a lot of brokers involved. Um, and Lloyd's is a very, very confusing organization. Um, it is a marketplace for insurance, very similar to um, like the stock market exchange. It's, it's a market for everyone to come together and come to a policy um, that will work for you. With TRG policies specifically, um, there, there's only two layers. Um, TRG has a specific cover note that has written written only for TRG and our customers. Um, we submit all submissions to Lloyd's to the underwriters and they write your policy. So that is, and they answer to the syndicates that provide the backing, but there's only two layers of communication for a TRG policy with Lloyd's. Uh, and then uh, I think that is about all of the questions that we have. Um, so I'm going to pass things back over to you, Meredith. Okay. Uh, thank you, Felicia, for answering all those questions. Hopefully, um, you know, a lot of you got some answers. Um, also, yeah, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to attend our webinar today. Uh, we know that, you know, this is a particularly confusing and unprecedented time and the TRG team just really wants to support where we can. Um, if you have any questions please don't hesitate to reach out to me directly by email at marketing at traderiskguarantee.com. Additionally check our blog uh, that is traderiskguarantee.com slash trgpeak. Uh, it is a treasure trove of excellent articles and information. And don't forget, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and of course, YouTube. Uh, we will be sending a follow-up email tomorrow with links from the presentation, so look out for that in your inbox. Um, we also, on that YouTube channel, we have already uh, uh, published one kind of shorter educational video on warehouse insurance that goes over some of the stuff we went over today. So also kind of look out for that in the coming months, we will be having more content come out. Um, and yeah, again, thank you for attending our webinar.